In this section of the quick start video, we're going to go over how to make an airflow measurement with a 410 manometer. So what we're going to do is power the instrument up. We're going to make sure that the instrument's in feet per minute. And again, temperature is always shown on the bottom. If it wasn't in feet per minute, we'd use the select key to toggle back around to it. So now that we're in feet per minute, we need to make a timed average measurement. So here's where we use the mode button. Go through hold, max, min, and then to the timed average function. You can see this is blanked out right now. I'm going to show you how to make a measurement here on the ground, and then we'll go ahead and make one at the register. So if we press and hold the mode key, you see it flash, it's ready to make a measurement. We'll let it up, and you can see it says average here. So right now it's taking an average measurement. If we get a little blow here and make this thing work, you see we have a measurement on the screen. If I press mode again, now it says hold average, and our average reading is 144 feet per minute. If I already use the select key again, I can see the average wet bulb temperature, average wind chill factor, and back to average velocity. Now we'll go ahead and make a measurement. All right, now we have the last reading still locked in. So we're going to go ahead and clear that reading out. In order to do that, we're going to press and hold the mode key. We're going to wait until it goes to all dashes. Now the, the dashes will stay there until we release the mode key, and then it'll start making a measurement. So we're going to go ahead at the same time as we release the mode key, we'll start traversing the grill. So we're going to let the mode key out. So we start getting a reading immediately. We're going to work our way across the grill. And it's quite normal for the airflow to go up and down. And this is the reason that we actually traverse the grill. Airflow through a register is not laminar. And we want to get an average reading of all those irregularities. So we're going to work across the entire grill and get a nice average measurement. Now one of the things you may see is the vane may stop moving. And that's also normal because there are dead spots in the grill or on the register. And that's just where no air is moving through at all. And that's quite common on a lot of registers and a lot of design. So we come across to the end here. We'll do one final pass across the bottom. We're going to press the mode key and stop the measurement. Okay, on this register we had an average velocity of 339 feet per minute. We can use the select key to see that we had an average wet bulb temperature of 45.9, an average wind chill of 51.6, and then back to average velocity at 339 feet per minute. And that's how you get the average on the duct. Now again, remember this is feet per minute, which is the velocity. In order to get CFM, we're going to have to finish out the process. All right, so we have a supply register here that we just measured the air velocity on. And let's say that we want to calculate what the approximate CFM of air is coming out of that register. The first thing that we have to do is we have to measure the open area of the register, which is 11 and a half by 13 and a half. And then we have to consider that this register is not 100% free open area. It's actually somewhat blocked by the veins. Now we went through the literature on the uh, from the manufacturer on this register, and it has about a 0.9 or 90% free open area. So when we do the math to calculate what the CFM is, we're going to need to take that into consideration. So let's go ahead and go over to the board, and I'll show you how to do the calculation real quick. All right, now that we've got our average velocity, and we might want to calculate the CFM. Typically, we'll calculate CFM or measure CFM with a large vane like the 417 because it does it automatically. But if you have the 410 and you want to be able to do that, it's worth knowing how. So what we have to do is we measured the free area of the register, which was 13 and a half by 11 and a half. We came up with 155.25 square inches. So now we have the square inches. We need to convert that to square feet. In order to get square feet, we have to divide it by 144 square inches per square foot. So we take 155.25 divided by 144 equals 1.078 square feet. Now, we have square feet, and we need to get it to cubic feet per minute. So we're going to multiply it times the velocity. So 1.078 feet squared, which is the area of our duct, times 339 feet per minute, which was the speed of the air, equals 365 CFM. That could also be written CFM this way of feet cubed per one minute. This is just a short way of writing CFM. So if we take that CFM, which came out to 365, 
we need to now multiply it times 0.9. And the reason we say 0.9 is because that's the free area that was published by the manufacturer of the register. It was 90% open. So 365 times 0.9 is 329 CFM. This is how you get the approximate CFM of a supply register with a 410 vein anemometer.